Uh, my name is Dr. David Harlan. I'm a member of the American Diabetes Association Community Liaison Board for the Northeast. And in my day job, I serve as the co-director of the Diabetes Center of Excellence at the University of Massachusetts. I also have co-founded a company named Stability Health with its goal being to improve care outcomes for all with diabetes. It's no mistake that we celebrate diabetes in November for several reasons. One is the 130th birthday of Sir Frederick Banting. He conceived of his idea to purify insulin 101 years ago on October 31st, 1920. And then of course, on January 11th, 1922, the first dose of, of insulin was given to a human being. Outside his home and clinic uh, in London, Ontario, where that dream occurred that allowed for insulin's first use, there is a flame of hope written by the Queen Mum in 1976. That flame is called the flame of hope and not an eternal flame because when it was lit, the pledge was made that the group that cures diabetes gets to extinguish that flame. So we will hear today um, from several speakers who will talk about insulin's role with diabetes. With all the improvements in care that we've achieved, there's still much to be done. So I challenge all of you who are listening to today's session to do what you can to see that the flame of hope is extinguished. Thanks for joining. Uh, hey, Doug. Doug Melton. Hello. He's a biologist, a professor at Harvard, and a scientific co-director at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute. When his son and daughter were di diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, he did something perhaps only he could do, which is set out to find a cure. And um, Doug, you focused on developing stem cell replacement for insulin producing cells and you know, launched a company to advance this kind of treatment. Uh, in 2019, Vertex Pharmaceuticals acquired that company. And, and last month, Vertex reported some really positive results from uh, a diabetic patient. Um, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about this therapy and how close is this to a cure? Well, thanks, Shirley, and thanks, everyone, for having me. I'm glad to provide some background on this. And Dave Harlan did a nice introduction to the importance of insulin. So I just remind people who aren't diabetic that uh, diabetics often, type 1 diabetics, have to inject themselves with insulin and monitor their blood sugars, their diet, their exercise constantly. And insulin has been a great medicine for 100 years. But in terms of a simple idea of how to change the course of treatment, some 15 years ago, we had the idea of why not provide the cells that are missing so that patients would get their own factories to make their own insulin. That means they would no longer be pricking their fingers or using a continuous glucose monitor nor injecting insulin because they'd have their own capacity restored to make insulin. And as you said, Shirley, Vertex, who took our sort of lab protocol and improved it and now made a clinical trial, reported out wonderful first results with the first patient um, who's been, I think now nearly a hundred days, um, essentially in some definition of cured of the disease in that he doesn't require the insulin he did before. And I'm told by a reporter who interviewed him that he feels like his life has changed. Now, in this case, the cells that we make from stem cells are provided along with an immunosuppressant. But I would say following on something I hadn't heard before until Dave Harlan mentioned it in terms of this flame of hope. <laughs> um, it hasn't really put the flame of hope out, but let's say we've poured some cold water on it. <laughs> it might be sizzling now. And that I think uh, we can look forward to a time where patients would receive cells that measure their blood sugar and squirt out just the right amount of insulin in other words, getting rid of glucose monitors and insulin pumps. Now, I don't want any listener to think that that's going to happen this year or even next year. That's going to take some years to develop. But I think we're now, because of this first patient's results, on the path to a cure for type 1. What about type 2? Well, the way I would describe the approach to type 2 is, of all the insulin that's now injected into people worldwide, 
and others on our panel will know the numbers better than me, but I think it's fair to say 60 to 70% of all of the insulin is now injected into type 2 diabetics. Mm. All type 1 diabetics require it to remain functional and alive, and many type 2 diabetics need it. So I don't see any reason why one couldn't imagine a time when type 2 diabetics will also receive cells that read their blood sugars and inject insulin. That's farther off though, surely. The first patients are going to be type one, but I think this gives hope for insulin independence. Again, I wanna emphasize, I'm not talking about something that'll happen this year or next year. Mm -hmm. It's years away, but these first results are very encouraging, I think, to get rid of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors, but it's going to take some time. And it's gonna take a community like that we have on this panel to think about how would you manufacture those things? How would you get it to people? And how would you afford it? I don't need to remind everyone, there's already something of a near scandal about the cost of insulin. And the cost of these cures will also be very high. So that's a challenge to our community, is how do you provide this kind of life-changing treatment to everybody? Mm -hmm.